Welcome to Breakthrough Success. I am your host, Mark Roberti, founder of the Content Marketing Plaza, bringing you three new episodes each week where I and top-level guests teach you how to take your business to the next level and achieve your breakthrough. And before we jump into today's episode, let me ask you a quick question. How much would your life change if you can make six figures from your content? Imagine being able to quit your 9-to-5 job, do what you love for a living, and spend more time with your family. That's what we help our students do at the Content Marketing Plaza, an eight-week program that will help you build your way to six figures via your content. You can learn more about the Plaza by heading over to contentmarketingplaza.com, which will be in the show notes. All right, let's jump right back into the episode. Now, if your breakthrough is to become an influencer who makes money doing what you love, we recently opened up the Advanced Influencer Mastermind. You can claim your free 30-day trial and learn more about it at contentmarketingplaza.com slash mastermind, which will be in the show notes. But the episode uh, that we are going to focus on, this topic, is about real estate success. I feel like a lot of people think that it's uh, super complex to really thrive in real estate, but if you make it a habit to work on it every day, you can achieve that success. Today's guest, she actually has a guide that you can use to achieve real estate success in just five minutes per day. She is the principal owner of the Huckabee Briscoe Conroy Group, HBC, uh, with Keller Williams. The HBC Group has been recognized by the Wall Street Journal as one of the 250 top realtor teams in the U.S., And the team has ranked in the top 100 teams with Keller Williams International every year since 2009, which is the year that the group joined KW. And since 1977, HBC Group has sold over 1,500 homes valued at over $1.5 billion. So obviously a lot of deals happening for this company uh, that today's guest is a part of as that principal owner. But who exactly is she? Well, today's guest... For episode 327 of the Breakthrough Success Podcast is none other than Karen Briscoe. Karen, it is such a pleasure to have you on the show. Absolutely. And a podcast named Breakthrough Success, I mean, that just fits right in with my concept of five-minute success. So I'm thrilled to be here. Karen, it is really awesome to have you on Breakthrough Success. I look forward to going into this because, I mean, this whole idea of being successful in real estate just through five minutes a day of continuous learning. You could apply that definitely to any skill you're trying to master. We'll definitely focus more on the real estate side, but I just wanted to put that tidbit in there because this is a skill useful regardless of uh, what you're trying to master. But before we uh, get deep into the real estate side, can you just give us a little bit of background into how your whole real estate journey began? So I had started in commercial real estate out of college and then married, had my children with my husband, two kids, and moved to the Washington, D.C. metro region for his career and spent about the next dozen years with primarily focused on our being the person at home, taking care of the kids, my husband's career required a lot of travel. So when I re-entered the workforce, I went in on the residential side. I found that it was a great fit because coming from the commercial side, we kind of call that the the hard side, you know, the right brain and then the the left brain of, you know, relationships and and can be called the soft side of sales. And so I really enjoyed that combination and entered residential in 2002 and met with success pretty quickly for only doing it half time or part time. Some people, uh, it can't be challenging to enter the market that way. But I met with success and was asked to become partners with the number 10 agent in the nation in 2006. And that was when the market was blowing and going. I mean, you really couldn't do anything wrong in 2006. Uh, so it was a it was a exciting times. And then the market crashed and corrected. We had the financial market crash in September of 08. And my business partner passed away that same month. So that was like hitting a wall, if you will, on, okay, where do we go from here? And honestly, had a couple of 
considerations of, of going into other avenues of real estate. There's, you know, the brokerage side, there's the management side, um, there's other tracks, if you will. So persevered, stayed with the sales. Uh, my business partner, Lizzie Conroy, joined me the next year in 09, which renewed my my energy. And we went a, set about rebuilding the company. Mm. And what often happens when people achieve a high level of success, everybody wants to know how they do it, right? I mean, that's why people listen to podcasts like Breakthrough Success. They want to hear how people did it. How did you do it? How did you go from, you know, the top and then go through the crash and then rebuild and achieve at the level that I did? So that's where this, the inspiration and uh, the story of, of the writing of the book, it, because I'd gotten into doing some quite a bit of coaching and training with people sharing this, this story. And it's interesting you mentioned the financial crisis. I mean, I was 10 when that happened, so I don't remember nearly as much of the details as the average listener. And I mean, one of the things that I do want to touch on that is, um, like if you invest in like 2006, things were going great, then 2008 happens, a lot of people just like give up right there because of fear. Like they don't want to have that happen to them again. Like we're more afraid of a loss uh, than uh, eager for a potential gain. So I'm wondering if you could share with us like how you stayed with real estate even after getting hit hard by 2008. So the one thing about being in the the brokerage or the the agent side or the transaction side is it wasn't my money. So, <laughs> I mean, it, it's still hard because taking people through that loss is a, it, it, what people in moving usually in transit, they're doing it for transitional reasons in their life, for a life event. So most common, believe it or not, are death and divorce, um, which are not necessarily positive events. Although there's, I, one thing that it's helpful to help people focus on is is the positive side, and that is you get to move on. And so that really became one of our our mantras, one of our our key when we were working with people that were going through challenging situations. And when you learn how to take people through a real estate transaction we, when it's not going to have, anything positive in the outcome other than you're moving on, <laughs> you learn some selling skills, you learn some people skills, you learn relationship skills, you learn empathy, and you learn how to make deals happen even when it's really, really, really hard. So it's actually a great training ground and people that that have been, I had the benefit I had been in a down or had worked in a down real estate market in Texas when the savings and loan crisis had. So I had some muscle memory. It wasn't the same crisis. And it, so it, it required new skills, but it, it is a muscle that you can, you can build. And in, in, it's very, very rare after doing 1500 transactions where there's, there's nothing that happens. I mean, there's always something that happens and helping people through that. And, and there's a couple of strategies to success that I found. One is to not take it personally, to be empathetic, to recognize what person someone's going through and, and, validating that and there's some scripts you can use to help people to validate that for them while at the same time helping them move through because that's the objective if you stay wallowing in the problem it's not going to go anywhere so the objective is to recognize it help them move through it and get to a solution and that that is definitely an interesting point like thinking about what kind of buyer you're getting like what is the uh, avatar of that individual and, and you can, you mentioned uh, a lot of them it's through divorce or death that uh, these people are looking for a new location and it's definitely very important to know your audience and one of the things I'm really interested about is you have this five minute daily practice that we can use to achieve success in real estate and I feel like some people think that like you gotta be like you gotta put in like you know hours and hours and hours each day and I'm wondering if you could share like how your five minute daily practice works so that we achieve success in real estate. So the five minute success came about because I would be doing this coaching and training and I'd say, you know, really 
personal and business development has to be a part of a professional's life because uh, you're only going to achieve to the level that you have capacity. And so how do you build capacity? How do you grow capable of doing more? Because if you just keep doing what you've always done, you're you're going to eventually go backwards at some point. I mean, because you, it, it, the world changes, you know, whether you're ready for it or not. So I think about all the changes that have happened in the industry just since I've been in the profession. So the idea that you're moving forward, well, what was paralyzing so many people was like, I don't have time. And I... It really is a reason, an excuse, a cop out, if you will. But at the same time, I was like, okay, but can you invest five minutes a day? Because starting small and building up is a proven method for habit formation. There's a a book that's about the Japanese Kazan method about one step at a time. And what happens is, is when people develop good habits, like you talk about productive habits, then they start to experience the benefits of it. And when you do, then you realize it's worth investing in. So the idea was to get the um, to get people focused on creating the habit and doing it every day. And then they would find that they would probably want to do more. The, the way the book is set up, though, it's designed to be read one page a day. Uh, several benefits have come out of that. One is that by focusing on one topic a day, most most real estate books are very heavy on information. They're almost textbook like. And what would happen I is that people would read that and they'd go, OK, I don't have time to read the whole thing. Where do I stop? I can't remember it all. How do I apply it? You read one concept a day takes about five minutes. Then you're more likely to remember it, particularly if it's inspiring has a message or a story that you're going to remember then you're more likely to apply it when you need it and that is what has uh, many people have found is the benefit one of the benefits of this Kazan method is that doing it in small chunks the other aspect of that is people um, there's this law called Parkinson's law that says limiting and restricting time actually makes us more effective and efficient so having a lot of time actually can be you know it not as advantageous as limiting time so limiting what you focus on every day but putting that into practice so that then it it has a cumulative effect and it's interesting you mentioned parkinson's law and i mean we definitely do a lot better when we have less time because all the distractions start to disappear and we really focus on what truly matters and i I mean, I've read real estate books and I completely agree where like, they're really great, but it's like, how exactly do I start? And that's why I like the whole idea of your uh, five minute daily practice uh, that is in your book. And I mean, it's definitely a great starting point, but when we want to go a little deeper into real estate, like we're applying concepts, we're maybe looking at deals, looking for buyers, stuff like that. How do we balance the time we spend on real estate with the rest of our business like it, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> yes well so the the book actually has a structure even though every day is different because it is exactly as as what you said i found that there's still basic principles that apply and so there's key components one is the first one is commit to get leads and that is because business development prospecting lead generating i mean anybody it's any kind of sales profession I, really, truly, everybody does lead generation. If you think about it, I, I like to say dentists, they call that, you know, business development to get patients. Um, churches call it evangelism. Everybody does lead generation. So there's there's topics on lead generation. Then there's the next component is what I call consult to sell. Some people call that conversion. The lead, you have to convert the lead because if you if you just have the lead and it, it does nothing, you you don't have a transaction at the end and you have no money coming in. So in that's the real estate language. And for example, your dentist, your dentist cleans teeth, does x-rays, does an exam. So they do something. There's an activity involved to bring in money. Then what often happens for, and, and this is a kind of an entrepreneurial dilemma, if you will, and it's it, it, it can be positive, but at the same time, it can cause 
um, challenges if the next component is connect to build and grow. The challenge for a lot of entrepreneurs or salespeople is they're really good at getting leads and they're really good at at converting those leads. What we call, you know, this transactional loop, uh, but they get stuck in it. It's like a hamster wheel. They're only as good as their next deal. So then, you know, your business stops the day you stop. And that is not sustainable or scalable. So there's principles to connect to build and grow so that then you have a you have an actual business mm-hmm. and not just a you know one one hit wonder or two hit wonder uh, which often happens as soon as somebody stops lead generating and doing deals and then their business stops so and then the idea of success thinking activities and vision mindset and motivation that is really all encompassing because it really I would say this is true for any professional, but specifically sales and in real estate, it has a high level of attrition. Only 90, I think the statistics are that only 90, uh, 96% of the agents leave the business in five years. So that, that means only like, you know, four to eight percent stay. <laughs> it's not a really good, you know, it's easy, relatively easy entry, but it is not a uh, profession that has a, a longevity to it because of the challenges associated with the rejection. And they, they, how do you, how do you sus- stay with it? Like even in down markets, how, how, how do, what is the resiliency? What are the ways of of performing even when you're in a challenging situation. And so that is all encompassing. And, and I really like how you have that system in place because I feel like when people think about balancing their time, um, like we can all do it. Uh, it's just a matter of what you define as a priority, but part of it is also having the clarity. So if you have, if you're clear on what the system is and what you have to do, it's easier to strike that balance because you always know what you have to be doing at any given moment to grow your real estate business, to grow your business on the side, like, I mean, to grow your current business, uh, whether it's creating content or something else and also spending time with your family. So it really comes down to how we are using uh, our time. And earlier I mentioned the massive success of HBC. I mean, uh, to have sold over $1.5 billion uh, worth of homes. I mean, that's very impressive. So uh, what would you consider as some of the essentials uh, that led to uh, the success of HBC? Essential is lead generation. It's really, truly, like I I started out, but I want to reiterate, until you have a lead, you have nothing to do. So in, in our industry, even more so, because I predominantly work with sellers and that's a pretty common structure where the rainmaker, the lead principal, is working mostly with sellers. And they most a lot of sellers sell and then they move. And you know, I would say at least half probably move outside the area. So you, I lose half my clients every year. <laughs> and so constantly filling that pipeline. And what is, and this is not just the real estate agents dilemma because I I think this is really a sales and a professional situation as well. And that is, is that as as soon as you've done a deal, you really have to be putting another one in the pipeline because otherwise you're likely to have what we call the roller coaster effect. And that is, you know, you'll have a, you'll, what a lot of people do is they work really, really, really hard on their lead and they get it to settlement or they get it through the process, whatever your funnel, you know, there's lots of different terminologies for this. And then they, they wake up and they go, Oh my gosh, I don't have any other ones in the, in the pipeline. And so what do I do? So the idea is to create the systems as you talked about in put it in place and do not take the foot off the, the uh, mm-hmm. accelerator because having I don't know if it's a fear of success that some people have or this upper limit problem, but what often happens is people take their foot off the accelerator and then they wake up and they go, I don't have any business coming in. And so then they put their foot back on the accelerator and then they get crazy busy and then they, they just, they, it's just such a roller coaster. So to, to 
build and grow a business having that pipeline of leads because then you have choices. And I would say this is true with any profession, right? Because or industry or content creation or, you know, internet sales or any kind of is that when you have more business and you know what to do with, you have choices. I mean, think about it. You can refer it out. You can top grade. You can cherry pick. You can mm. hire staff. You can get virtual assistants. You can, I mean, it, it, there's there's so many ways that you could leverage when you have leads. When you don't have leads, then all that goes away. And I really like that focus on leads because that is how you make the uh, revenue. That is how you make the sale. And I also like how you say continuously filling up that pipeline because you get a sale, but then where's the next sale going to come from? And this is similar to how people create a training course or publish a book and they sell it uh, to someone. You got to find another customer for it. <laughs> now, for something like the Advanced Influencer Mastermind that I have, that's a monthly payment. So you can get recurring people that way. So then the income's a little more predictable, but still you got to look for ways to fill in that pipeline. And I'm wondering, what is your approach for uh, finding leads who seem like the right fit? So there, there are many sales trainings that advocate time blocking. And, and if that's working to success, I would certainly not encourage someone to change what, what's working for them. But what I find is, is that, that, that well, time is a non-renewable resource and people often just piddle that time away and they go, what happened with that, you know, three hours, whatever, and nothing has actually happened. And so what I advocate for, and I have done since day one is what I call activity blocking. And I track. So what, you know, gets measured, gets improved. I track every contact, every lead. So in the, because where the professional can have an impact is at the beginning of that roller coaster because putting those leads into the pipeline or onto the roller coaster, you have control over that. You really don't have control over the outcome. You don't really have control over how many people sign up, how many people decide they're going to sell this year, how many people decide they're going to buy this year, and then all the other things that have to happen to make those things happen. So what you do have control over is how many people you get into the pipeline. So whatever the activities are that generates business, that's where really the focus um, I found when when people do that. And the beauty, lots of beauties of activity blocking, overtime blocking, as I mentioned, the tracking, because I know where my business is coming from. I know where I go to go back to and generate more business. <laughs> there's There's certainly different types of leads and sources that are more effective for me to spend my time and resources on than others. And so I invest in those. And the other thing is, is I can track to see how much generates so much business. So if I want to increase my business, then I can use those numbers to track what how many more activities to do in order to generate that amount of business and hold that accountable, the activities accountable. I, I also advocate what I call front loading and backfilling because if I can work ahead, I, I like if I'm traveling or have a lot of podcasts scheduled or speaking engagements, I can work ahead and I can, I very rarely have this happen where I fall behind, but I, I have, had situations where I've had to backfill. So have way more control over activity, your activities than you do your time. And I mean, I really like this idea of just getting really clear on the important things that you have to do with that activity blocking, just getting really clear on what you have to do, when you have to do it, but also what are the different things that I'm doing throughout the day? Because you could go into a day thinking that you spent all of your time on your business and then you take a deeper look at how you're tracking your time and maybe you spent 30 minutes on Facebook. You spent an hour watching TV. So it's definitely good to uh, do all of those different things. And we've talked a lot about what we can do to get better, but I'm wondering if you can share with us on the other side of that, what do you believe holds most people back from achieving success in real estate? What holds most people back is is their themselves, 
and their their fears and what I see, and I have to say, I've had this happen myself, so I, I can speak from personal experience, is that people tend to take this personally. And the residential real estate transaction often is a very personal transaction. It's somebody's home. And so there's a lot of emotion associated with it. In in fact, on the there's a, a scale for the stressors in people's lives and moving is like in the top 10, but they're almost always associated with another stressor. Even if they're, we talked about the challenging ones, the death and divorce, but we also have, you know, the positive ones are stressors as well. Having children, getting married, new job, uh, all of those things can be, they can, will precipitate a move or a transition in moving. And so, we're dealing with people that are going through a lot of stress and recognizing that and retaining your professional perspective and not taking it personally. So the not taking it personally starts with the the lead generation because statistically, I find that it's just very similar to the baseball player in the batting a thousand or, you know, the, even the best in the business one and three is considered considered the top pros Mm. it's the same in this in this business so in my experience and i've tracked this for many years and and tracked many people uh that one person will will work with you one person will work with someone else and one person and i'm talking about people you know people you're lead generating i'm not talking about the random market i'm talking about people you know that you would think would work with you to buy or sell real estate or people that have contacted you about buying or selling real estate and you've met with them and they they are they typically fall in one of three categories. And then a third of them will do something later. And whatever that definition of later is, I've had it as long as, you know, 15 years <laughs> where people have come back to me and said, yeah, remember that house that we were talking about? So uh, that ability to, to uh, persevere through that and keep your wits about you and keep your own self intact. That's why that's why the investment in yourself, because truly that's your highest investment anyhow, but investing in your own personal and business development, I find is what takes people to the, first of all, to, to become successful, A, sustain success, and then achieve a high level of success over a long period of time, uh, that ability to to do that is um, in is what I've I've found. And it's interesting you mentioned that we tend to hold ourselves back the most because I mean the goals that we have in our minds, the way we perceive something like real estate or growing a big content brand, really affects the way we view our work, the way we view that whole journey. And I, a lot of it comes down to mindset. Now, you have to know how to do it. Like, you wouldn't just go into your first real estate deal not knowing what to do. You wouldn't um, do something unless you had some basic background because that always helps. Um, but then it's just a matter of your thoughts and the habits that you're doing. And with habits in mind, I'm wondering, Karen, if you could share with us some of the habits that you would consider essential to your success. Absolutely. I totally agree with you about habits. I I have a quote by F.M. Alexander that people do not decide their futures. They decide their habits and their habits decide their futures. So on the personal development front, I found that having a morning routine has really been a a game changer for me. I I follow Hal Elrod and the Miracle Morning advocate. He's endorsed my books. The idea of starting out the day with success, I mean, you're going to, first of all, if you begin your day that way, in most cases, it continues throughout the day, but also investing in myself, and that is an investment in myself and self-care, is where I can then have the energy and the drive and the ability to then perform well, because if I'm not performing well, I, everything else is not going to go well. So the business is, is, is going to be impacted. So the, and I'm not, I don't know if you're familiar with the Miracle Morning, but it has an acronym associated with it called, um, that follows the word savers. And so the S in savers is, is silence or meditation, 
A is affirmations, V is visualization, E is exercise, R is reading, and S is scribing and it's or journaling. The, they use the S so it fits in the acronym of Savers. And and then I have people that, are, that have this mind block if they don't have enough time, right? We're back to this whole time, <laughs> too busy to invest in themselves. And I'm like, okay, well, even the savers can be done in six minutes. So it, it, the idea is to invest in yourself first because then everything else, like I said, will go better from there. What I see often happens is people get this whole busy has become this competitive arena <laughs> mm-hmm. in my view and the idea they get busy with things that they don't really care about and don't really have an impact. Um, and that's crowding out time for the things that do. And I really like this notion of us investing in ourselves because uh, most people, they save themselves for last They uh, When yes. you're thinking about money, they pay all the bills and then whatever's left, they invest in themselves. And the self-care, which is also something Karen pointed out. I mean, it's not just investing money, it's investing your time. So if you cater to everyone else's needs and you're the last one, it's not going to be as good. Uh, Not just from a personal standpoint, but that kind of stuff oozes into professional as well. So I really like the success habits that Karen shared. Uh, She also shared the book Miracle Morning, which will be in the show notes, along with content marketing secrets and podcast domination. I'm wondering if you could share with us another book that you believe will have a positive impact on this. The book, The Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert, she is really well known for Eat, Pray, Love. The Big Magic really was a a game changer for me. I had a major paradigm shift when I read it because it's about the concept that in the universe, in the in that there are all these ideas and the ideas will come to people and it is theirs to do. And if you act on it, then obviously it's yours to do. What most people though, is that they don't recognize it for what it is and they don't act on it. And so if an idea's time has come, it's going to find somebody who's, who is going to act on it. And I, I share this example about the, In the early 1900s, what they called the electricity wars, where Westinghouse, Tesla, and Edison were all, quote unquote, inventing electricity at the same time. And all that that idea creation was happening at the same time. So the amazing thing about this, if you think about big magic, is that the universe is co-creating And that opportunity to co-create is so energizing and powerful. And what I find is, is for myself, when I have have recognized it and acted on it, then actually more opportunity comes my way. So it's like an opportunity magnet. It's like an attraction, if you will, energy. So I, I really have found that whole concept to be really empowering. And I mean, that, that is a really great book recommendation. I like the messages from that book. Definitely one that I have to add to my reading list because I honestly have not heard of uh, those two books. So I'll be reading them shortly. And uh, in closing, I'm wondering if you could share with us one question that you believe we need to ask ourselves more often. So if you knew you could achieve a higher level success by just investing five minutes a day, would you do it? Mm-hmm. I, I find that, that that opens people up to think affirmatively, and then that sets in motion the actual, the actions. So you have the, the thinking, you have the vision that you can accomplish, and then you set up the actions. Karen, thank you so much for sharing that awesome question with us and all of your insights throughout our time together. Um, for anyone who is wondering, where, Karen, can we find you on the web? So the number five, Minute Success, has a website, has Facebook, has a podcast, Five, the number of five, Minute Success, and reach out to me on any of those channels and similar. We have social media as well that, that follow the number five, Minute Success. We'd love to connect with you and help you achieve a higher level of success.
Karen, thank you so much for letting us know where we can find you and for sharing all of your great insights throughout our time together. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, please let us know your big takeaway from this by joining the Breakthrough Success community over at contentmarketingplaza.com slash Facebook. But once again, Karen, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show and sharing all of your great insights with us. Well, thank you. And here's to your success, Mark. Want to dominate the podcasting industry? Now you can with your free copy of my book, Podcast Domination. You'll learn how to launch, grow, and monetize your very own show. And whether you are a beginner or an expert, this book has a lot of golden nuggets for you. We'll cover the cost of producing this book. All we ask is that you cover the shipping. To get your copy, head over to markgaberti.com slash pd.